Let's start by studying the single responsibility principle. This principle is attributed to Robert C. Martin, known as Uncle Bob, and the fundamental principle states that a subsystem, module, class, and even a function should not have more than one reason to change. This definition may seem simple or confusing if you have never dealt with it before. For example, you might wonder, what does it mean to have one reason to change in a system? Let's analyze this principle in more detail, but first, let's study a couple of concepts that are closely related to the single responsibility principle, coupling and cohesion. When developing a system, you may have wondered, where should my code go? Perhaps, as a good developer, you are always looking for the best way to organize your code to make it easier to read, understand, and change if necessary. There are some general recommendations that we can take into account to achieve these goals in the code and that are related to the single responsibility principle. The first recommendation is to keep things that need to change together as close as possible in the code. The second recommendation is to allow unrelated things in the code to change independently. Finally, you should minimize code duplication as long as it does not break the system's correctness. These objectives are closely related to the terms applied to code called cohesion and coupling. You will often hear that the ideal is to achieve low coupling and high cohesion, but what exactly does this mean? To understand this phrase, we first have to study the concepts individually. Let's first analyze the term called coupling. This term refers to the link between two or more components in a system that is extremely difficult to change. And how are these links created? You've probably created more than one on occasion without knowing it. One of the ways is through the magic word new, used in multiple programming languages, or when a new instance of a class is created. Tight coupling or high coupling means that related classes have multiple links created which makes their maintenance extremely complicated. If there is any change in one of these classes, this change will propagate throughout the system, making it potentially difficult to understand and maintain. On the other hand, low coupling allows classes to be consumed and tested independently of other classes. Let's see coupling in action in Visual Studio. In Visual Studio, I have created a cancel project. The project contains only one class called program.cs, which allows us to handle the cancel to carry out printing of some words, receive user input, etc. In this specific case, I'm going to copy and paste a couple of classes that I previously created that will allow us to demonstrate this part of coupling. The first class is called person. This class contains only one property called name. We have a second class called printer, which is very simple. It just contains a method called print, which receives a parameter of type person and carries out the printing through cancel.writeLine. I'm going to quickly comment on this second class called printer, and I'm going to show you a tool that is part of Visual Studio that we can use to find out how coupling is as part of our code. If we look at the top, we have as part of the menu a tool called Analyze. We have an option called Calculate Code Metrics. We can calculate the metrics for our solution or for the project we currently have selected. I'm going to click on the option to perform the calculation for the current project. This displays a new window that we see at the bottom, which allows us to know some specific metrics. What I've done is disable the columns that I'm not interested in and only left enable this option of coupling between classes. Notice that as part of the coupling or as part of this specific window, we are shown the different components, different classes that are part of the system. We can see in a hierarchical way each of the classes that belong to this specific assembly and what is the coupling between each of them. For example, the person class, which we see on the screen, contains zero coupling, a zero value in the section that says class coupling. We have our class called program, which does contain a value of one as part of the coupling, meaning we have some kind of use of an external reference as part of this program class. 
If we review the program class, we see that we only have a call through console.grayline. You might wonder why we have here a number that says 1 as part of the coupling, if we have not carried out the instantiation of a new class. A value of 1 appears because we are explicitly using this class called cancel and this method called writeLine. This indicates that we are creating some coupling between this cancel class and the class that is using it, that is, program or the program class, which we do not see explicitly as we did before, but it is defined behind the scenes. If we uncomment the code of this class called printer, notice what will happen. I'm going to press this button that will allow us to recalculate the metrics for the solution and our printer class now appears here. This printer reference indicates that there is a value of 2 for the number of references we are using as part of this class. The first reference is given through this method, through the parameters of this method, that is, we are using here a person type parameter and we are also using the cancel class again to carry out the printing of this person type object. We are using two different types of data as part of this printer class and it is this number that appears here. It is a very simple example but it allows us to see what happens when we are using external classes. We see how the coupling is being created. We may not even have realized that those links, that internal coupling is being created and it makes maintenance a bit difficult if this system grows much more. It is a very simple tool to use that will allow you to obtain coupling very quickly. Another important point is that, for example, if I create a person reference here, let's call it p2 for example, equal to new person, here we are creating a new link to the person class again. However, when I click on this button to calculate the metrics again, this value 2 does not change. This means that in reality, even though we are using this instance of the class twice, the actual coupling or that link we are creating between the printer class and our person class is actually a value of 1 since only one link is being created. No matter how many times you use the class, only one link will be created if it is the same reference to the same data type. You might wonder what the ideal number is to maintain as part of the coupling. According to some studies, some papers that have came out from people who have conducted research precisely on this topic, which is a quite interesting and strong topic for system design, the magic number, according to them, is the value 9. 9 should be the maximum threshold for coupling, for the number of classes that relate as part of a class as such. That is, you should have 9 different references that make up your class. And if you go beyond that threshold, then perhaps your class is performing some operations that do not correspond to that class. Basically, this is coupling. It is a very simple term to understand and also very easy to visualize.